I got serious about getting out of debt a few months ago, so I started to research and found the ultimate quick fix to get out of debt after reading countless of books and watching thousands of hours of YouTube videos. And after just one month and three hours of work per week, I'm completely debt free and I just purchased my first $1 million home with all cash. <laughs> yeah, okay, no way that's happening. Here's the truth. Watching videos on how to get out of debt quickly can take you down multiple rabbit holes such as MLMs, real estate investments that end up being timeshares or mentorship programs. The list goes on and on and on. Guess what? These quick fixes can result in you being in more debt, you will also end up being more lost and confused. I'm here to tell you from someone that actually helps people get out of debt quickly, that these types of quick fixes are often a distraction and neither quick nor a fix. Also, two of the most limited resources we have are time and energy. So if you're filling up your time with quick fixes to get out of debt, you could end up staying on the debt hamster wheel the rest of your life. I ask you to consider a change. Instead of doing a quick fix, look for a fix that actually may be quick, but is also legitimate. To do that, I believe that thoroughly understanding these five key concepts that we will discuss in this video will inform you about best options to get out of debt. And let me give you a hint, getting out of debt shouldn't require you to purchase a expensive mentoring service or jump on some real estate investment opportunity that offers a free in-person course that is limited to the next five people. Before starting Ascend, I worked at Google in Mountain View, California in finance and operations. And then I went on to help scale two successful personal loan type startups that either went public with over a billion dollar market cap or exited in an acquisition. You know, at Ascend, we built free Ascend debt calculators that have helped over 150,000 people understand their options to get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. We also created our own debt payoff method that I'll discuss later. And what we built what I believe is the only debt payoff planner and zero-based budget app on the iOS store for iPhones. We have helped thousands of individuals understand their options to eliminate over $190 million in debt. I share my background with you because I want you to know that I'm sharing these things that come from experience. Understanding the five key concepts in this video can help you get out of debt and live a debt-free life. And before we jump into the concepts, I want you to know that this video is for informational purposes only. So let's look at each concept and then we'll break it apart in each de detail. First, learn which debt payoff method works best for you. Second, consolidate your debt if you have and have addressed a spending problem. Three, consider utilizing your home in your debt-free journey. Fourth, learn about nonprofit credit counseling and whether it's applicable for you. Fifth, understand options when you can't afford your debt. And before we get begin, this video is much too long to keep everyone's attention. So I added chapters below so that you can jump around to whatever is most applicable and helpful to you. I have one other request before getting started. A little birdie tells me that liking videos on YouTube tells YouTube that the content is helpful and others could benefit from it as well. So if you're benefiting from this video or could see that you benefit, would you please consider clicking the little like button below my desk here. I greatly appreciate it and it's really encouraging to me. Finally, I'm planning my next video to go through an exact formula to use the methods that we describe in this video. So if you'd like to see that video, please consider subscribing to see that video when I release it, hopefully in the next week or two. Okay, enough of my shameless plug. Let's talk about what's most important. Debt is stressful. Debt is not fun to think about. I've experienced firsthand the issues that debt and the stress that it can cause. Procrastination tells you to wait. Maybe wait till next year, wait for the New Year's resolution. Just wait, you don't need to do it today. It's stressful today. You don't need to check your mail and see all those bills. That's stressful and you don't need more stress in your life. Procrastination telling you is that next week's is better and I'm here to tell you that today is better, not next week. So before we jump into these concepts, I want you to think about this in terms of doing something today because procrastination is a liar and if you don't do something today, then who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. So now enough with that, 
Let's talk about debt payoff planning. Now, the first four methods that we talk about assume that you can afford the debt. Now, in its simplest form, we consider debt affordability when your debt balances are going down, even by as much as $5 each month. So if your debt balance is increasing each month, you may wanna browse through the, these next topics or hop over to section five, where we'll talk about options when you can't afford your debt. So what is debt payoff planning? Debt payoff planning is where you use a strategy to structure your debt and pay it off in a consistent routine. Now, please note that when you do do debt payoff planning, you have to afford making extra payments towards your debt each month. If you can't afford extra payments, that is just basically paying minimum payments and it's not debt payoff planning. There's two main payoff planning strategies to consider and one that we recently developed to help you combine the best of both strategies. The first is the snowball method. I personally don't love the snowball method, but it is the most popular thanks potentially to Dave Ramsey. Now, I will explain potentially why he believes in it so much, but first let's discuss, discuss what it is. In the snowball method, you line up your balances from lowest to highest balance, and then you make extra payments towards your smallest balance. Once you pay off your smallest balance, you snowball that payment into the next smallest balance. Here's an example in one of its simplest forms. You have two debts for $500 and $1,000 with equal minimum payments of $50 per month. Let's say you have $150 to pay towards the debt each month. In the snowball method, you would put $100 to the $500 balance and $50 to your $1,000 balance. When you're finished paying off your $500 balance, you would then put $150 towards your $1,000 balance. Here's the problem. You can lose a lot of money on the snowball method if your highest balance debts also have the highest interest rates. Many personal finance gurus will mention two studies to back up their approval of the snowball method. One is Harvard, one is Kellogg. I included a link in the description below, but here's a tidbit from the Harvard paper. Our research suggests that people are more motivated to get out of debt, not only by concentrating on one account, but also by beginning with the smalls. And here's the tidbit from the Kellogg paper. A team of Kellogg School researchers has found that people with large credit card balances are more likely to pay down their entire debt if they focus first on paying off the cards with the smallest balance, even if that approach doesn't make the most economic sense. Now, I look at that and say, did Wells Fargo, did the big banks support these papers because that can make them the most money? I'm not sure. Personally, I don't like when finance gurus make everything so prescriptive where you have to do something. Everyone's different, you're different, I'm different. So if someone is very determined to get out of debt, you may lose a lot of money doing the snowball method. And the snowball me method may help people who really need to get those quick wins and get some momentum. So that's kind of my perspective on the snowball method. The next common method is called the avalanche method. And in the, in the avalanche method, you're prioritizing your paying you down your debt with the highest interest rate first, working your debt way down to the lowest interest rate. This method ensures you save the most money by on interest by paying down the debt that costs you the most. Let's take the previous simple example with a $500 and $1,000 balance. Now, let's say the, the, the $500 balance has a 0% interest and the $1,000 balance has a 30% interest rate. In the avalanche method, you would take that $100 and pay it towards the $1,000 balance as that has the highest interest rates. And then once that's paid off, you would use the $150 towards the $500 balance. Now, there's some things I like about Snowball Method, but I only like it for small amounts. And that's why at Ascend, we developed the Savvy Method a few years ago that's completely automated and combines what we believe are some of the best attributes of the Snowball and Avalanche Method. In the Savvy Method, you would use the Snowball Method if the balances are small enough on your first debts and at the beginning of your death payoff journey. When those are addressed, Savvy would then change to the avalanche method to finish getting out of debt. Now, we didn't love any automated debt payoff planners out there and the Savvy method, well, we kind of invented it. So we built the Savvy debt payoff planner on the iOS that automatically gives feedback which debts to pay off in which order. And we did end up allowing you to choose any of the three options, Savvy, Snowball, or Avalanche. Although we prefer Savvy. Before I jump in the next thing, I wanna talk about method. Now, once you figure out a debt payoff method, you may want to consider step-by-step -step guides that can help you along the journey 
to give you accountability and encouragement to getting out of debt. Many people swear by Dave Ramsey's method, but it was made in the early 1990s. So I developed my own strategy that I'm gonna to plan to publish in my next video if you're interested. Now, the second option to consider is to consolidating your debt if you have a lot of high interest debt into a debt consolidation loan. Now, I worked at a debt consolidation loan startup, so I understand this landscape well, and I do wanna provide a caveat. People love to get consolidation loans because it often consolidates higher interest credit cards into a lower interest debt consolidation loan, and that has a fixed interest rate and a fixed getting out of debt date. I have one major caveat for you. If you have bad spending habits before consolidating your debt, you unfortunately will also have those after consolidating your debt. What I mean by this is that I've seen so many times and talked to so many people that get a consolidation loan, don't cancel their credit cards after they pay them off, and then go back to using their credit cards all over again. This can be the worst strategy, as now you have credit card payments again and a consolidation loan payment, which is often higher. Also, only a select audience can generally get consolidation loans, as lenders typically want a credit score that's at or above 620, and a maximum debt to income ratio that's quite low. People who don't meet this criteria often struggle getting a loan. Okay, the third thing is, is utilizing your home in some way to help you get out of debt. Now, this section assumes you own a home and have equity in your home. Now, many people have some equity right now because of home prices rising over the last few years, but if this isn't you, I suggest to either move on to section four um, unless this information is interesting. The first option on the home side is what's called a HELOC. It is a home equity line of credit. If you own a home and have equity, you can consider using a HELOC to borrow against the equity in your home and pay off the debt. The pro of a HELOC is that you may be able to get a lower interest rate than a consolidation loan because it's backed against your house. The obvious con of a HELOC is that, you know, the interest rates have gone up due to the federal in interest rate increases and it's also backed against your house. And if you have bad spending habits before getting a HELOC, why on earth would it change after you get a HELOC? So that's something to consider. The next option we're gonna talk about is the cash out refinance to pay down your debts. Now, cash out refinancing can help you tackle high interest debt by using your home's equity. You can do so by refinancing your mortgage, taking out a larger amount than your existing mortgage. You know, the difference between the two is that cash out part. You know, you receive this cash, which you can use to pay off your high interest de debts like credit cards or personal loans. You know, the major challenge with the cash out refinance at the moment is that you may get a 7% interest rate or something to that extent on a new loan versus 3.5 percent interest rate or whatever your current uh, loan has it could make sense though if you have high interest debt that you pay off also you have to know that if you let's say you have 20 years of paying it off you might have to redo that to another third year loan which can be quite annoying when you think about you know last 10 years and, and um, paying off that debt so if you're doing this option you may want to compare the interest rates before and after to know whether it's a good option for you also if you can't meet the new mortgage payments you could risk losing your home so make sure you avoid falling into a trap of accumulating too much new debt once your high interest debts are paid off if you go this option the third option to get out of debt using your home equity is called home investment a home investment is when you work with a company who gives you cash for equity in your home. The difference here is that unlike a HELOC or cash out refinance, you don't pick up another monthly payment. A home investment company would give you cash up front and then when you sell your home after a specific period of time, they would get a portion of the equity proceeds. The con here is that you may have to sell your home eventually, let's say after 10 years, and there's an option to buy back the equity, but that can be expensive. So I'd estimate that home investment is probably the most expensive out of the cash out refinance and HELOC in most circumstances, although you may benefit from not having a monthly payment as you would in those other options. If your house equity goes down, you may be able to share some of those losses with that investment. So the fourth thing to, 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 to learn about is nonprofit credit counseling. Nonprofit credit counseling, also known as debt management, is where you work with a nonprofit credit counseling agencies to negotiate the interest rates down to a fixed rate between zero and maybe 15%. Now they mainly work with credit cards and work potentially with some loans, but work best with high interest credit cards. With debt management, the debt management company will ask you to close your lines of credit and, and negotiate the debt balances down so there might be a small impact on your credit score. 
Now you may have to pay the entire debt back just at a lower interest rate and a specific number of payments, generally between 36 and 60 months. The difference here within a consolidation loan is that you don't need to qualify in the same sense because you aren't taking a loan to pay off your debts. Instead, you're working directly with the creditors. There may still be some requirements, but it may not be as stringent as a consolidation loan. The potential cons of debt, debt management is that you'd have to close your credit cards and most nonprofit credit counseling agencies work specifically with credit cards. So if you have all personal loans, you may be out of luck of working with a debt management company. And if you're looking for a reputable nonprofit credit counseling, we can help get you linked with an, with an awesome company that we've been working with. So you can give us a call at 833-272-3631 and we'll get you linked up with one or discuss other options with you. So now that we've covered options that you can pursue when you can't afford your debt, let's cover options that you can pursue when you cannot afford your debt. And just to recap, we consider affordability, meaning that your debts are going down at the end of each month, even though even by $5. If you aren't able to chip away your debt and your debt is increasing every month, then you may not be able to afford your debt. First, we'll cover often the fastest option to get out of debt, which is called Chapter 7 Bankruptcy. Then we'll cover other options if Chapter 7 Bankruptcy doesn't work for you. I consider Chapter 7 Bankruptcy to be the cheapest, easy, and fastest way to get out of debt in many situations. The reason why is it generally costs between $1,000 and $2,500 in attorney fees, and your unsecured debt is wiped away in three to four months. Now, in order to file for a Chapter 7 Bankruptcy, you would have to qualify generally by passing something called the means test. In the means test, they compare your household income to the median income of your household and state. In some cases, people may qualify even if their household income is above the median set in the state through the second half of the means test. It's a little confusing, so we actually built the Ascend Chapter 7 calculator that's 100% free that you can easily find online that can help you estimate whether you qualify for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and the all-in cost of the chapter seven bankruptcy. Now, when you file for legal protection via bankruptcy, your creditors can no longer sue you and judgments and wage garnishments or liens often get dropped. One of the challenges is that you can take a big hit on your credit score in a chapter seven bankruptcy and it stays on your credit report for 10 years. But because the process is so short, you can start rebuilding your credit score quite fast when you're discharged in three to four months. Some important things to note is that when you file chapter seven bankruptcy, you may risk losing assets like your home or car based on what's called exemptions in your state. But you know, our chapter seven calculator can also help you estimate whether you would even lose assets because in often in many times, many people do not lose any assets filing chapter seven bankruptcy. My goal is often just to really help you understand your options, the cost of those options, and pros and cons of each of those options. Now let's say you can't qualify for chapter seven bankruptcy or you don't want to because you may lose assets or another reason. Here are three other main options to consider. The first is a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Now in a chapter 13 bankruptcy, you pay back some of your debt generally in, an, in a monthly payment plan, plan for three to five years. If you haven't pay, finished paying off all your unsecured debt at the end of the plan, the unsecured debt is then discharge or forgiven. Now, if you don't qualify for a chapter seven bankruptcy, this can sometimes be your cheapest option if you have little to no disposal income and low equity in your assets. With the chapter 13 bankruptcy, you are able to keep your assets like homes or cars. You can even stop a foreclosure or repossession and catch up on your payments. However, if you have equity that exceeds the exemptions in your state, you'll need to potentially pay back that non-exempt equity over the course of your chapter 13 plan to your creditors the assets. In some cases, people end up in what's called what we call a 100% chapter 13 plan, where you end up paying 100% of your unsecured debt over the plan because you have I mean, potentially high disposal income or significant non-exempt equity. In those cases, the next option actually may save you more money. It's called debt settlement, also known as debt relief, debt negotiation. Debt settlement can be a bit risky, but you can also be a good tool to get out of debt. In debt settlement, you would need to go behind on your payments for four to six months, and then a debt settlement company or you would try to settle your debt for 50% or less. If you work with a debt settlement company, they would charge you a fee to do this negotiation handling, and the fee generally is between 15 and 25% of your enrolled debt. So assuming you're able to settle for 50%, you pay back around 65 to 75% of your debt over time. So in debt settlement, you save because you don't end up having to pay the entire debt back in many situations. So if you have a $10,000 debt, a debt settlement company would try to settle that for potentially $5,000 then take a fee 
and you get some debt forgiven that you wouldn't see in a 100% chapter 13 plan because you're paying 100% of the debt back. The risky part of a debt settlement is that you have to go behind on your debt, which has a negative impact on your credit report and credit score. It also puts you at a risk of a lawsuit for that unpaid debt. Creditors often have the right to sue you to try to collect the debt through the form of a court judgment. Your chance of a lawsuit can depend on who your creditors are and the balance you owe. And if you do get sued, your debt settlement company may be able to still settle the debt or they could settle it before it goes to court. But what we see is that when it goes to court, generally the settlement is gonna be for a higher percentage. So even though you, know, you, you get sued, you can still often resolve your debt via a debt settlement company. Now, debt settlement companies have a lot of data and they should know which creditors tend to sue and which ones don't sue. So if a debt settlement company is saying, we've never seen someone sue or we don't see that very often, I would ask more questions to determine uh, why they have never seen anyone sue because off, there's a lot of lawsuits all the time. Now, another thing is to consider is that when a creditor forgives debt, you may also have tax liability. Now, you still could save money overall, but it's good to understand whether you're tax solvent or insolvent. And we have another calculator for that that can help you kind of estimate tax insolvency. Finally, I know we just talked about debt management, also known as nonprofit credit counseling, but I believe that debt management can be a good tool potentially if you can afford your debt and if you cannot afford your debt because what's happening is you're getting on a payment plan and your interest rate let's say you have a 29 percent interest rate and it's going down to three or four or five percent then you may be able to actually save money and get up debt faster with debt management even if you cannot afford your debt and that is where i think that debt management could be a good tool for a lot of different people wow that was such a long video and i'm thankful for you to for sticking around i hope this video is helpful leave me any questions if you have any questions in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer as many as i can Give me a call um, or text at 833-272-3631 if you'd like to speak with me or someone on my team about options. We talk to people all day about how to get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster, and our calls are 100% free. And if you want to watch my next video covering the process, when you do have a debt payoff method that you chose, please consider subscribing as I'm planning to come up with that video next week. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a wonderful day.